Hey guys, Don Miller here. I, uh, I want to talk to you guys today about car care and about car maintenance. This is a little unusual and it's not the normal format that I do in, but I figure now's as good a time as any. Um, I'm, a, I'm a diesel mechanic. I'm certified in the Suzu and American Diesels. And I've noticed driving around my neighborhood or even the town where I live in and, and abroad going out to film trains and do my regular everyday business that there are a lot of you driving around with low tires. Your tires are the single most expensive um, single most expensive part of your vehicle that you're going to buy that lasts the life of your vehicle. There are a couple of things that you can do that are going to greatly improve your gas mileage, um, improve the quality of your tires, uh, stuff like that. And I'm going to tell you what they are. One, if you change your current air filter to a K&N air filter, you will increase your gas mileage by about 3 or 4%. And you're thinking, well, Don, that's not a lot. That's a lot if you get 14 miles per gallon. Okay? That's a 2.8 mile per gallon difference. Okay? That, that's a lot. That's, that, that's a big difference. If you get 25 miles to the gallon, 25 times 3%, that could be a 7.5 mile per difference. It just, the numbers go up the greater the your gas mileage you already get. I'll give you an instance. My GMC, I have a 1988 GMC. And when I bought the truck, I was only getting 13.5 to 12 miles per gallon. I installed a K&N air filter, air filter in there. And my gas miles went up dramatically. I went from about 13 and a half, 14, to 17 miles per gallon in the city, about 19 and a half on the highway. That's a big difference, you know, from going from being a gas sucker to a moderate gas sucker. Um, I'm trying to stop doing those ums, so forgive me. It's the medicine I take. <laughs> I just want to help you out with this. By you changing out that air filter, you also will improve the performance, the overall performance of your engine. k and air filters cause the air to be straight. When air enters your filter on the outside, the air is turbulent. The k and air filter straightens the air out, which allows more to go in into your Venturi and then when you mix it with the fuel, the straighter air causes better fuel atomization, all right? which in turn causes better burn when you're driving your car. Another thing to look at that you can do that would help you out a lot is most people, if not a great deal of people, have never had the fuel filter changed that sits in the frame rail. Okay. GM uses a fuel filter inside the frame rail on pickup trucks towards the back of the frame rail. On the cars, it's probably in the same place, relatively speaking, um, toward the back, closer to the fuel tank. You might want to get it done professionally because it's a messy job and it, it's, it's a dangerous job at that. Um, you might want to seek a professional on that one. But you changing that fuel filter allows your engine to idle at the proper fuel pressure, which I think fuel injected is 16 pounds. I know that carbureted is roughly 7.5 to 8 pounds of fuel pressure. Fuel injected is 16 pounds of pressure. It's very important that your engine doesn't struggle to pull fuel out of the tank. And a lot of times I've seen on a lot of, especially older Isuzu trucks that I've worked on, and even some GM trucks, where they're using a gas engine, that fuel filter is just nasty. It's never been changed. They always get the front one done on the front of the engine. That's good. 
but that's not the only filter there is. Changing that filter will greatly improve your gas mileage. Okay? Here's another thing. Your tires. We went back to tires a little. We started out there. I'm going to go back to them. Tire pressure is equally important as to anything on your vehicle. Number one, it causes improper pressure causes dry rot. Okay? It helps um, propel or advance dry rot. Using uh, tire shine, very bad, not good for your tires. It removes the waxes the manufacturer installs in the tire to help the tire remain more elastic. Okay? And elastic elasticity is what gives you a smooth ride, allows the sidewall to flex properly. All right? If your sidewall doesn't flex properly, your tire would blow out. Okay? You're riding essentially on the sidewall. When you underinflate your tires, you increase the wear on the sidewall where the bead of the inner diameter presses up against the wheel. When that is under pressure, you allow that bead to slide back and forth on the wheel like this. That causes excess of wear and causes that bead to go out around. This is where you get slow leaks developed on your tires. It's very important to have your tires checked once a month of your tire pressures. Overinflation will cause just the center of the tire to wear and not the shoulder. Okay? Underinflation you'll cause the shoulders to wear and not the center. You always want proper inflation. I run on my GMC, I have 30 and a half, 31 by 9 and a half tires on my truck. That's larger than stock because the stock tires are 235-75R15s. Mine are about 2 inches taller than that. Um, I got those tires because I used to do a lot of driving back in the woods and that was a good tire for that. It's an aggressive tread. It's a Dunlop Trail something. I don't know what it is. It's, I won't ever buy them again. My recommendation to you is don't buy a Dunlop tire, period. <laughs> They're just not good tires. And my, that's my opinion. It doesn't affect the company whatsoever. But pay attention to your tire inflation. If you can't check it, take it to a service station. They'll be more than happy to check the tire pressure for you. These are things that are going to greatly impress your, improve your gas mileage. You know, in today's economy, the way gas is right now, it's three dollars. I got gas the other day for two ninety eight a gallon. I put fifteen gallons on the GMC. I don't ever fill it up because it holds thirty four gallons, and uh, that's a lot of gas. Thirty four at three ninety a gallon, three fifty a gallon. That's about a hundred bucks. I don't do that. I just fill it up to about fifteen, maybe twenty gallons. That's as, excuse me, that's as much as I go. But these are things that will greatly improve your gas mileage lengthen the life of your tires, lengthen the life of your engine. Here's the thing. When you drive on a low tire, you cause the car to plow. You get the similar effect when you're driving on snow. I'm sure most of you that are from the north are aware when you're driving on snow, it's harder for your car to move because you're actually forcing snow out of the way, but sometimes it doesn't like to move and it causes a wedge under your tire and your car has to work harder to drive. Well, that's the same thing that happens when you drive on low tires. Um, excuse me, didn't mean to say that. I'm trying to eliminate the ums. <laughs> when you drive on low tires, you put excess of strain on your motor, excess of strain on your transmission, excess of strain on your drive line. Okay? Taking care of that once a month, it's a simple thing. You don't have to do it. Take it to a service station, slip the guy $3. Let him check your tires. Standard pressure on a 15 is 32. Standard on a 16 is about 35. Okay? If you've got low profile tires, they actually take more because it causes the tires to be flatter on the bottom. When you're driving your car, only about three and a half, four inches of your tire actually contacts the road surface. Okay? So if you're going to have that kind of an investment and only that much is going to be on the road service, you want to make sure those tires are in excellent condition, always at proper pressure, okay? Then your gas mileage will go up. You'll save some money. You'll have more money. I promise you, if you do these things. Now, 
there are some costs involved with some of this other stuff, like the fuel filter. Use a quality fuel filter, okay? If your car, if you want, go to the factory or the, the dealership, let them install a dealer-approved filter. It does make a difference, okay? You know, dealerships or car manufacturers release, release the tooling for other companies to copy the filters and parts on your car, okay? And it's usually a couple of years afterwards. I remember when I had my Hummer, it was next to nobody to find the front hubs. Nobody made them except for GM, and they were $250 a piece. And then after about two years, we started seeing that other companies have, or had the tooling for it. But I'm sorry, I'm not going to buy a Hummer or a GM vehicle in the United States and buy a part for it from a dealership or from a, from a, uh, a cut-down price people like the Advanced Auto Parts, and it'd be made in Japan. I'm not doing that. I'm not supporting Japanese steel. If my car's foreign, yeah, I'll put the foreign parts back on it. But if it's American, I'm not buying a cheaper, lesser-made part from another country and putting that person out of work. That's just not the way we, we, we should do things. We should, if you buy an American car, you ought to buy American-made parts. You can ask for it by name. They're usually the name brand parts like Chrysler or Jeep or something like that. You know, GM, Ford, stuff in that area, okay? So we've discussed that part. Now, the k and filter, that's an expensive filter. But it's the only filter you'll ever buy. All you do is unscrew, or home will unscrew. If you got an old car, you unscrew. <laughs> if you got a new car, take your clips off, raise your air cleaner box up, there's your filter. The k and filters cost roughly between 30 and 50 bucks, depending on your vehicle. But you've only got to buy it one time. Okay? You don't have to clean it, but every 50,000 miles. And that's an easy job. So what I do is I keep my old filter, and I, when I have to clean it, I install the new one. I take the old filter out. I mean the new filter out, the Canon filter. I take it out. I do my cleaning, and while it's drying, I put the old filter back in. I'm only going to be driving a day. It's not going to hurt it for a day. But you will see a drastic difference in your mileage. When you invest in a K&N filter, um, I use K&N air filters and I use K&N oil filters. And the reason I use K&N oil filters is because they're a quality filter. They have a diaphragm in there that's made of steel that does not allow the oil to drain back out of your galley, which is your oil uh, runners that supply oil to the parts in your engine. Otherwise, cheaper filters or lesser brands allow that oil to drain back in there and you start your engine with a dry start. Okay, let's talk about oil now, all right? We've got the, we've covered air filter, we've covered the fuel filter, we've covered your tires. Well, let's talk about one more thing, and then I'm going to call it a day. Let's talk about oil. All right, there's a lot of folks out there that say, oh, it doesn't make a difference, synthetic, conventional, they're all the same. Hogwash, they're not the same, okay? Conventional oil has waxes put into it. And those waxes build up in your engine. Synthetic oil has no waxes in it. Conventional oil has a burning point of 270 degrees. Synthetic oil has a burning point of 490 degrees. Okay? I use only synthetic oil in my GMC. I've got 194,000 miles of nothing but synthetic oil only run in miles. I use it in my boat. I use it in my truck, both my vehicles I use it in. It's worth the money. If you use AMS oil, synthetic oil in your vehicle, you can go 25,000 miles between oil changes. What you would do is at about 12,500, unscrew your filter, take it off, put your new filter on there, and then put your maybe a half a quart of oil back into it. AMS oil, oil is the best oil on the market. It is absolutely the best oil there is. That's my opinion. I've used it for the last five years. And it is absolutely, in my book, the best oil there is. Now, in the wintertime, I use 5W30 motor oil in my truck. Number one, it causes the truck to warm up quicker. Um, there I go again, right? <laughs> it's a bad habit. 
It causes the truck to warm up quicker. It allows the engine to move smoother. Okay? In the summertime, I use 15W40, which is what my Amsoil is. I have a 33-gallon drum behind my house of Amsoil 15W40 oil. That's what I use in the summer months. Absolutely the best protection there is. I pull a boat all summer long and into the fall. In the wintertime, I don't pull much at all, if at all. You know, uh, the you're going to like Amsoil. You're going to like synthetic oil personally. You're going to notice a difference in your gas. Your gas mileage is not going to be a drastic noticeability. Um, you're going to notice about a mile per gallon difference with the Amsoil. It's just better for your engine. Now, if you're not going to keep your car, you're going to sell it in two years, don't waste your money. Use, use regular conventional oil. But here's the key factors about synthetic oil. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Number one, longer intervals on oil changes. With synthetic oil, with just a premium market, not Amazon, but a premium market synthetic oil, we'll say like Pennzoil. If your engine has got low mileage, you can go 12,000. You can actually go 15,000 miles between oil changes with Pennzoil premium grade platinum synthetic oil. If you use Amsoil synthetic oil, they have a 5W30 in your vehicle that's 5 weight in the winter, 30 weight in the summer. You can go 25,000 miles with just a filter change at 12,500. These are things that are going to benefit your engine. It will cause your engine to produce less friction. Remember in the 90's they had all those commercials with TPFE and uh, DuPont Teflon and all that crap they used to put up there? Okay, that's garbage. That is junk. Okay? If you buy synthetic oil you'll have the same benefits. Alright? It'll give you the same benefits. It's better for your vehicle. It causes less friction. Now, vehicles have to produce friction. That's how a car moves on the roadway. If it de didn't develop friction between the tire and the roadway, you wouldn't go anywhere. You'd just sit there and spin your tires. But friction equals motion. But in an engine, that friction is bad. Because you want, you want to keep that friction as cold as possible. Now, people say, yeah, but Don... If that's the case, why not just take out the thermostat? No, you don't want to do that either. Your engine has to run at a certain temperature to burn the varnish off the inside of the cylinder walls. If it doesn't, that stuff will cake up and that will destroy your engine as well. That's why you have a thermostat in your motor. Plus, it's to keep your engine from overheating. That The thermostat regulates the temperature and allows it to cycle through the engine. The antifreeze... All antifreeze does, antifreeze doesn't keep it cold. It just it just absorbs the heat in the motor. That's it. Doesn't make things colder. It just absorbs the heat. Antifreeze is just a transfer of heat. It absorbs the heat. It's just like an air conditioner in a car. An air conditioner doesn't make the air colder. What makes the air colder is the evaporator. The air passes over the evaporator, excuse me, over the condenser. And when it does that, the condenser is cold because of the Freon in there. The air passes through it, and it makes it colder. When it comes back into your vehicle, it's cold air. But that's, we're not going to worry about that. That's a whole other issue. And I'm not the greatest AC guy in the world. I'm more about engines than I am air conditioning. <laughs> so, okay, we've got tires, oil, air filter, and fuel filter. That's basically the four big things in my book. Always make sure you're using good antifreeze. Make sure your antifreeze is a 50-50 mix. It should never be 40% antifreeze and 60% water. Water freezes. You don't want to break a block going down the roadway in the wintertime. So always use a good 50-50 mix. And if you do use less, make sure it's less water and more antifreeze. Don't do the opposite of it. Less antifreeze and more water. Water freezes. You don't want that concentration to be that far off. You want it to be a good 50-50 mix. Okay? Use a quality antifreeze. Uh, the stuff they make nowadays, the, the pink stuff, has got to be the best stuff out there because that's all they use in diesels. Okay? Use a good oil. Don't use junk oil. Okay? Here's another one for you. Don't use bad fuel. 
Okay? Don't use don't use garbage fuel. And you know what junk fuel is. That's mom and top pop station down the corner who mixes 40% ethanol with his gas. Okay? Ethanol is alcohol. It dries out your engine. It'll dry out your engine. It'll, 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 it'll evaporate. Okay? You don't believe me? Take your glass of alcohol, just 91% isopropyl, and set it outside for a day and see how fast it's gone. Alright? But look. I've gone over all the four basic things, tires, oil, air filter, fuel filter. Four basic things. Some other things you can do if you haven't done it yet is you ought to change the spark plugs every two years. You ought to change the spark plug wires every two years. You ought to put a new distributor cap and button in your car every two years. Okay? These are things that are going to greatly improve your gas mileage. The less amount of time your engine has to turn to develop a spark, the better off you are. Use good spark plugs. Use good oil. Okay? Stay away from store brand oil. Buy good oil. Mobile One. Um, Delvac is good oil, but it's basically for trucks. Ams Oil. Penn's Oil. Stay away from Quaker State. Well, I don't know. Quaker State's probably gotten better over the year. <laughs> we'll, stay, we'll use Quaker State. But these are things you can do that are going to greatly improve your truck, your car, your motorcycle. You're going to get the benefit out of it. Remember, in the winter time, you want to use a low weight, five weight, ten weight oil. That's the greater, that's the the, 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 the heaviest weight you want to use in the winter. In the summertime, you want to use a thirty weight, or forty weight, or twenty weight. Stay away from fifty weight. Don't buy that crap from Castrol, the high rev engine. That's a bunch of baloney. Okay, that's just a sales pitch. Doesn't really work that way. You want to make sure you use a good quality oil. K and N. Letter K, symbol and, letter N. K and N air filter. Invest that $40 and save yourself a boatload of cash and gas. Let's quit giving the Arabs all of our money and gas. Or Venezuela. Let's quit doing that. Let's quit supporting foreign oil. All right? Use this gas, I mean, excuse me, use this air filter. Use good oil, good synthetic oil. Change your fuel filter on a regular basis. Now, this is one time. You should change it every 20,000 miles. Make sure your trans fluid is good, too. Um, you know, service stations offer that, that flush of the transmission fluid. As long as your transmission is not slipping, that's a good idea. If your transmission has any kind of slip in it, or if your speedometer jumps up there real quick and comes down, but you haven't moved, don't change your fluid. Don't believe what somebody told you it's a good idea. Do not change fluid if your transmission slips. You will regret it. Your transmission will burn up in less than three months. I'm not a transmission man, but I'm telling you from experience. Don't do it. I think I've covered all the bases. I hope you listen to this advice and you take it to the heart. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can feel free to email me at my Yahoo address. It is Miller, all lowercase, M-I-L-L-E-R dot Donald, lowercase, D-O-N-A-L-D, 51 at Yahoo.com. This is Don Miller signing off. Have a good day.